What's up, fellas? What we're looking at right here is the hydrogen burner, the methane thermal cracker that was able to melt the manganese M24 or M42 drill bits, the cobalt drill bits. So we know this burner is hotter than anything I've ever built. Usually you have to use enhanced oxygen to melt drill bits. It's just not something you can do with a regular air aspirated burner. So this video is going to be a little bit long. Right here what we're looking at is the hottest burner I have ever built before the hydrogen burner. Note the blue flame on this burner. For all the people who were telling me the flame was being colored by the hot metal, I knew you were wrong and I wasn't trying to be a jerk in the comments. It's just that I've got some experience in this. So you can see here that's an orange hydrogen flame right there. That metal is white hot on the inside. You can tell by the exterior of that second liner is red hot. So that's a quarter inch away from the yellow hot piece and it's still that hot. You can see the white hot temperature inside of there. So here we go, blue flame, no hydrogen, and that's the hottest we can ever get a air aspirated towards 2,496 degrees Fahrenheit was as hot as I've ever been able to get. And that thing is screaming white hot. The flame is still blue. The metal does not color the flame orange and yellow. So that's why I was being a jerk in the comment section, guys. See here how we got a blue flame? Watch what happens to the color of this blue flame. It's going to slowly start to change orange because the hydrogen production is increasing. So I do apologize for being, you know, so insistent in the comments. It's just this is what was on my mind when you guys were rebutting me. The, the Thunderfoots that showed up to Thunderfoot me. That's why I was being a jerk. This right here. That's a hydrogen flame. And I'm just, I'm unconvincible. No one can tell me otherwise. It's just not possible. I know for a fact it's hydrogen because it was like 100 degrees hotter than any burner I've ever made in my life. Well, about 90 degrees. Close enough. So there it is, boiling some liquid propane. So, why does hydrogen burn hotter than other fuels? It's really quite simple. When you burn propane, you've got C3H8. That's a pretty big molecule. It takes energy to crack that molecule. So it robs the flame temperature of heat. In addition to that, the carbon reacts with CO2 that's created in the flame. And it's called the Bowdard reaction. And it converts that CO2 back into CO gas. That is an endothermic process. That is why flame temperatures have an upper limit because once you start to get hotter, these secondary Bowdard reactions, which are endothermic, but they have a very high Gibbs free energy to where the energy must go way up before you can get the reaction to start. So hydrogen, which is H2, doesn't have any of these molecules involved. So when it combines with a single diatomic oxygen molecule, that oxygen molecule gets split. So there is maybe just one endothermic reaction of splitting a molecule, okay? But we are left with a atomic oxygen molecule or nascent oxygen, which has a higher affinity to react with, stu with stuff. So it's not going to have that splitting it endothermic action to it the next hydrogen atom that it meets up with. So, or the hydrogen molecule, I should say. There's not a whole lot of diatomic, there's not a whole lot of atomic hydrogen in this process, I don't think. There probably is, actually, in the cracker. There probably is a lot of atomic hydrogen. That just means single atom. Usually we have diatomic molecules, like oxygen's O2, hydrogen's H2. Um, so, yeah. So you can see here, hydrogen is burning at around 4,000 degrees in air. Okay, and again, these are adiabatic flame temps, so this is total bull crap. You're never going to get propane to burn as hot. I don't care what you do. You ain't never going to get propane to burn over 2,900 degrees in air. I just don't think it's possible, guys. I'm sticking with that. I'm sticking to my guns on that. I would say that hydrogen could probably get you to 3,000 degrees. So take a thousand degrees off the adiabatic flame temperature if you want to know the actual possible temperature. I don't know why they do this. I had some engineers get really pissed off at me a while back about this. Their simulation was telling everyone that I'm a dumbass and that the computer knows better. Well, it turns out the computer was a dumbass and I was right. 
the computer kept telling everyone everything was going to burn up and melt down. And I kept saying, nope, that's adiabatic flame temp. That's adiabatic flame temp like a freaking parrot. And they all hate me now. But uh, yeah, so just remember that being right can often make people hate you. Okay, so for all the Thunderfoot chemists out there who think I'm not a chemist myself, I don't have a PhD or nothing, but I'm pretty well versed in chemical kinetics. I do a lot of this stuff. Sometimes I even get paid to do it. I have side jobs that involve some pretty technical stuff. So I'm not just spouting off at the mouth, fellas. I'm, I'm a bookworm. I've been a nerd my whole life. I'm kind of a rare bird when it comes to that kind of thing. You might not think it by looking at me, but I do study up on some stuff. So propane. The change of enthalpy for the combustion of propane is 2,220 kilojoules per mole. The same thing for methane is 891 kilojoules per mole. Because there is four hydrogen atoms and one mole of methane, we produce four moles of hydrogen per every one mole of methane that we burn, giving us 1,144 kilojoules per mole of energy to work with. The thermal energy required the heat of formation to crack both gases, converting them into hydrogen and carbon, is a lousy 173 kilojoules per mole. So as you can see, we have a significant surplus, almost 1,000 kilojoules per mole of energy, which still leaves us burning hotter and more powerful than the methane. Here, let's do the actual math. Okay, I was wrong about the 1,000, obviously, right? But it's still more powerful energy-wise than the, the methane that we were burning from cracking the propane. So we're doing good here, guys. We've got 971 kilojoules per mole of energy burning the hydrogen. So for you guys who were telling me that there is not enough thermal energy to crack the propane from burning propane, I, and, and man, you were really, really adamant about it. Um, now I see what Einstein meant when negative people have a problem for every solution. All right, I don't think I should do this, but I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story. Story time. Let me know in the comments if you like story time. I've got some doozies. I think one of the people who tried to rebuke me so badly in the comments is because they look at me and they think, oh, that guy don't know much. He's, what is he, a carpenter? And I, I kind of look like a little, a little rough on the rough side there. So I get it. I don't appear to be academically inept. So I don't feel so bad about being a huge jerk in the comments, though I do get a little carried away. I'm kind of a um, little bit of an aggressive person. I was brought up that way. I was brought up in a pretty bad environment. I spent my entire teenage life locked up behind bars. I did a five-year stint because I was just too wild. They put me in there for nine months, and I got in so many fights, started so many fires, and tried to escape so much that I got years and years of set time added on. I was what they called maxed out. I was a max out case. And, and once you're maxed out, you don't care anymore. A 30 ball didn't threaten me like it used to. A 30 ball is 30 days in confinement, 360 days set time. And bro, I was racking them up every week, even in confinement. That's right, I was in confinement doing stuff like I ripped up my wafer mattress, which is a, a high strength, indestructible mattress. I cut it up with the expanded metal on the little peephole on my door. And then I took the thick nylon strap that's wrapped all the way around the wafer mattress. It's so you can't hang yourself. And I ended up with a piece of nylon strap this wide, about that thick and 20 foot long that wrapped my blanket. And I tied my door to my bed and they couldn't get in my room because the knives that they have on duty that are made to cut down people who are trying to hang themselves weren't sharp enough to cut the nylon. So I proved two things in one, one shebang on that day, that their anti-suicide wafer mattresses were not anti-suicidal. I could have totally hung myself if I was suicidal. And I showed the administration that none of the anti-suicidal knives had been sharpened and were not equipped to save a child who was trying to commit suicide. So kind of a victorious moment there for me. I had, have a, I had a hell of a lot of fun doing it because I also, they started yanking the door so hard that it ripped the screen out of the door a little bit. So they got a gap in there this big, but I was clever and I knew that would happen. So I rubbed refried beans all over the rope before they became aware of what was going on. And it looked like feces. They thought I had rubbed poop 
all over the rope. And because of that, they wanted nothing to do with it. They were not going to touch that rope. They, <laughs> they just left me stuck in my room with my door tied shut. By I had like five straps coming from the door and going back to my bed, which was also bolted down on the bed. So I don't know why I'm telling you this story. I probably just lost a lot of business telling prospective clients that. But hey, I was a teenager, man. Which is where I got a lot of my bookworming from. I did a lot of reading when I could until they put me on combustible restrictions for starting fires. So yeah, they weren't too happy with me on that one. That was like a $500 hospital anti-suicide wafer mattress. It was an indestructible wafer mattress, which is like a blanket. They just throw you in a room with nothing sometimes and throw this wafer mattress in there so you're not on pure concrete because you'll get bed sores from being in the cells for too long with nothing it happened to me. My feet hurt so bad that I couldn't stand up. And my body was in so much pain from laying on concrete that I couldn't lay down. You riddle that one out for me and tell me how that went. Okay, fellas, we got to give this thing a benefit of the doubt. We're going to run it on the largest air compressor I have available. I don't think it's going to cook over, but there's a chance that once we start a minimal amount of hydrogen production and that temperature goes up, we could see a parabolic rise and temperature, which would save us from the three millimeter death. Nope, we did not cook off. There's just too many design problems. I'm noticing another flaw. The interior combustion chamber just isn't quite big enough. It's just a hair small. So we're done with this. We're just gonna write down some details in the lab book. So this whole project started with this drawing that's been on my board for weeks. And things got really slow for me and I have nothing to do at the moment. So I decided to go ahead and give this thing a try. I've also had this in a lab book for years too. The idea of building a furnace that cracks the fuel rather than the burner, which is probably going to be the next step in this project. We're going to make a forge foundry furnace, whatever you want to call it, with the cracker inside the furnace maybe to where we're using the forge as the cracker rather than the burner. It'd be nice to not do that because I want to sell this thing at some point. The first unit had a counter flow heat exchange. And the reason I'm calling it counter flow is because you have a hot side and a warm side to these burners. Um, this is co-flow where we come in on the cool side and we discharge on the hot side. And we saw what that did. It Too much waste heat came out of the burner and went into the combustor, which ain't a total big deal. But the other units, we didn't have that red hot line. We were doing a lot more pyrolysis right here in this zone. This zone was getting hot enough right here to do the job. In this case, we just weren't getting hot enough. We weren't getting that lemon yellow metal that's needed to crack the methane. We were only getting a dull orange bright red. And this burner here, we had a thinner liner, an interior liner. It was one millimeter thick. This here is three millimeters thick. So that pretty much killed the performance there. We're only doing methane and ethylene out of this burner. 
which may have some benefits to look at. I'm not interested in that. I want to skip right back by to hydrogen because I believe if we have hydrogen coming out of here, the reason a hydrogen flame is hotter, I'm not sure, 100% sure of this, but I believe it's because there are less chemical bonds that need to be broken. So I contacted a couple of companies to buy some Inconel 600, some two inch tubing, and they want $2,000 for a 20 foot stick and that's all they'll sell me. So, <laughs> I don't know about you, but that guy, man, maybe they can only sell 20 foot sticks. I don't know. I just, I feel like they'd be better off by being like everyone else and selling six foot lengths. Nobody that I know of only sells 20 foot sticks of nothing. Pretty stupid. So, I did hook up with a guy on eBay who's got some Inconel 625, which isn't as good, but it may do. I'm thinking we need to make everything out of Inconel, even this tube right here and everything. So counterflow is the way to go. We discovered that this is a waste just by the fact that this line got red hot. I don't want all that heat blasting out right there. I want that to stay in the pyrolysis chamber to crack the fuel. So it's a no-go for that reason alone. And I don't know why I did this. It may have just, there was no reason for it that I can remember, but it's good that I did it so now we know that it doesn't work. So that's going in the lab book. And we're gonna design some alien tech. And what do I mean by that? I'm gonna do a design that can only be done by 3D printing. And then I'm gonna do a fabrication design. So I've got two designs coming on this thing. The alien tech is gonna be pretty cool because you can have dual line tubes um, and stuff like that. I can have the propane shrouding a hot line and stuff. The vaporizer will be so much more efficient and all that good stuff. And it can be made out of extremely exotic metals. Probably costs more than people can afford, but it's something to look at. So we'll take a look at a couple more details here. Also the Inconel, I believe the thermal conductivity of Inconel might be higher than stainless, but I don't know for sure. I'm going to double check that. And I'm going to look into some Monel and some other metals that may have higher thermal conductivity constants because that's also a thing. Stainless steel is a pretty lousy conductor of heat. And um, we'll go from there. Some people mentioned some ceramics and things like that. That's a little bit out of my budget right now. But I don't really have that kind of budget right now. We're like days away from a civil war over here in America. I don't know about you guys, but... We got um, an election that's getting ready to get stolen, or the guy we want's gonna end up dead. 